Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Few Brain Cells, and the host of Pete Taramina's and Ordinary Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching Ordinary Intelligence. A lot to talk about this week here. Um... You know, we're getting really, really close to the end of the year. We got week number, um, we're at week nine now of the season, um, which sets up to be a really, really interesting storyline, especially when you look at the playoff teams. Um, so we're going to get right into it. Um, we're going to start off with um, <laughs> Division Four. Um Harper Woods pretty much a lock to get in the playoffs. Um, sitting um, had a nice win against Pontiac, um, fifty six nothing. I mean, like it was really basically domination from the red over the blue and then the white over the gold, with the only exception of of um, Ferndale knocking off A and T, and yet Ferndale is playing for their lives. So you know, so we're gonna break all that down and explain why Ferndale's playing for their lives in the postseason. Um, also, we're going to explain each team and previewing each team's possible playoff opponent and also teams that need to win to get and get some help to get in the playoffs. So let's, without further ado, let's, let's start breaking this one down here. Um, starting with division four. I mean, Harper Woods, as I mentioned, knocked up Pontiac 56, nothing, um, really wasn't close. And so now Harper Woods right now sits, um, Harper Woods is a team, they sit really, um, they sit at a really nice spot here. Um, I mean, they, they sit at a really nice spot. And, um, you know, in the playoffs, I think they're right now fifth in Division Four, um, sitting at 5-3. and three. Um, They take on Detroit East English Village Prep, a team that really is needing to get into the playoffs. Obviously, they're not in a safe spot right now when it comes to postseason. Um, but for Harper Woods, you know, for me, when I look at their situation, they got they could be looking at a game with Redford Union in the playoffs. Um, they could be looking at, you know, they could be looking at um, possibly a district which has Madison Heights Lampier in there. Um, and, and if they got to play Madison Heights Lampier, then they're going to have to go to Madison Heights to play them. And I know how good the Rams are this year. Well coached team under coach from Roy, Roy Ozerowski. Um, for Harper Woods, it's just, can, um, Nate Washlow, you know what I mean, develop, you know what I mean, quickly, um, Dakota Grant's had a really nice year for them, um, so basically, when you look at Harper Woods, they're locked into the playoffs, um, the question for me for them is, are they a two seed, or are they a three seed, could they even get a number one seed, I mean, like, you know, it's still very possible, I mean, they could play Detroit Southeastern, that's another team that, um, according to Snooze's um, playoff map, he has Harper Woods playing. I mean, Detroit Henry Ford's a team that's in the in the postseason conversation as well. So when I look at Harper Woods' scenario, um, you know, it's possible they could play the Jungle Ayers in the first round, or they could play Detroit Henry Ford in the first round. I mean, like, you know, there are options. But the problem that I see for Harper Woods right now and looks to be more and more like it's going to be Madison Heights Lampier. That could be a um, that could be the team to really keep an eye on. Is um, you know, for them is can the Pioneers find a way to um, you know, and I really think for them it's going to come down to is can Harper Woods um, you know, when I look at them is can Harper Woods find a um. You know what they got? If they got to play Mass Knights Lampier, it's a really difficult matchup. I mean, I know Mass Knights Lampier. They got they've knocked off two OA teams. I mean, they knocked off um, Ferndale earlier in the year, twenty seven eighteen, um, and then they knocked off Ber and then they got Berkeley this week. So you know, so this is going to be very interesting. And I know Harper Woods is better than both those two teams respectively. So it'll be interesting to see how. The matchup goes between Harper Woods and uh, Madison Lights Lampier. But right when I look at the map and I look at Snooze's map and I look at my own map and I said to myself, okay, um, Detroit Southeastern is very possible for them. It really is. But also, 
Redford Union's a team that's a team that's really made a lot of mention. I mean, that's a that's a team to really keep an eye on is Redford Union. Um, I also think a team to really keep an eye on is um another team to keep an eye on for Harper Woods. As I mentioned, you got Detroit Southeastern there. Could they go north? It's possible, but I don't think it's likely right now. Um, could Harper Woods see Goodridge in a regional? Maybe. I mean, that's a that's another possible option. I mean, if they're sent north. So, you know, so when I look at Harper Woods, I mean, like, their situation right now, it looks to me more and more like they're going to have to see Madison Heights Lampier in the, um, in the districts. Um, you know, and I think that would be a really difficult matchup for Harper Woods, considering all things possible. But when I look at Harper Woods right now, they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. I think Coach Odin's got them believing in the right direction. They played a very tough schedule. They got three losses to, um, you know, to D1. Novi Detroit Catholic Central is undefeated. You got Oxford, who's going to be a playoff team. And then you also got Groves, who is one of the top teams in Division Two. So, you know, so Harper Woods' three losses are to legit teams. They've also beaten some really good teams. They beat Stony Creek. They beat Rochester. Um, you know, those are... I think their best wins at the moment right now. I think Stony Creek right now is their best win of the moment right now. Well, even though Redford Union is as well, but I still think more and more that that Stony Creek game because one, it's a D1 win. Two, um, you know, and I think, two, I think it's going to make them, you know, you got that Rochester win, which is huge at the moment for them as well. That's the other D1 win. So for Harper Woods, it's really right now, is there in a really interesting spot right now when I look at the Pioneers um, when it comes to their postseason fate. And I think it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, obviously with Harper Woods, it's going to be is can they, um, you know, can they find a way to, um, you know, get back into the thick of it um, in Division Four? Can they make another run? I mean, considering you look at D4 right now, I mean, the way that, Hudsonville Unity Christian's been playing. I mean, like, they've got other, I mean, like, you know, there's some really good teams, particularly in the west side of the state, um, to really keep an eye on there. And I think right now for Harper Woods, it's going to come down to is can they, um, is can they build on that success? And I think that's going to be the key for them um, going forward in D4. So Harper Woods right now, looking at, a, looking at them, they should knock off East English Village Prep. Um, games at Harper Woods, probably get a home game, most likely against Detroit Southeastern. Um, you know, maybe Redford Union is another team to keep an eye on for Harper Woods, um, in that, in that department. So those are the two teams I would really keep an eye on for Harper Woods. Um, I don't think they're going to go more North. I mean, up to the thumb area. I really don't think they're going to see a team like Marysville or, any, or anyone like that. I'd be really shocked that they were sent that way, but you know, like, you know, like they were last year when they had to play Crosswell Lex in the first round. So, but I, I really don't see it this time around because there's there's some more teams right now that are north um, around the Port Huron area, particularly Marysville, uh, Marine City, um, that area. I mean, like those are what I think could be the ultimate case. I think Detroit Southeast and the Redford Union are the two teams Harper Woods could see in the first round. So we'll keep an eye on it. I mean, like, so it'd be really interesting to see how that one goes, but. Harper Woods locked in the playoffs, um, but they're going to have to either see, but they're likely looking at a collision with Madison Heights Lampier, most likely going to be in the district final. So, you know, so we'll see how that one goes. So we'll see how, um, we'll see how it goes between um, the Pine, I mean, with the Pioneers as we go forward there. Um, let's go to Division Three. Um, when I look at Avondale, Avondale had a really tough 49 12 loss to Stony Creek. Um, you kind of expected that this would be the case for Avondale. Um, you know, against a very good Stony Creek team was really improving under Coach Rick Powell. Um, for Coach Bob Meyer, this is going to be really interesting to see how they do against Carlton Airport because Airport's one of those teams that are battling for a postseason spot in um, Division um, Four right now. And I think when I look at Airport, considering they got a new staff, new system there. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see how they do um, when they have to make that trip up north to Abdale to take on the Yellow Jackets. And I think that's going to be the key is can 
Avondale bounced back after a really tough loss to Stony Creek. And, you know, you kind of look at, yeah, Stony Creek, they had to win that game to get in the playoffs. They did. So when I look at Carlton Airport, you know, and Avondale, that game's going to be really interesting. If Airport knocks off Avondale, it's going to put Avondale in a really more, in a more difficult spot than they already are in Division Three because, you know, you're looking at the playoff matchup and, Snooze and I, and Goose Poos and I are probably going to be in agreement with this, is they're probably seeing Fenton in the first round. And to me, that's a difficult match for Avondale because Avondale runs a wing tee. Fenton's a team that likes to spread you out. Even though Fenton, I know they want to get revenge after what happened to them against Goodrich when they were absolutely destroyed in the Flint Metro League Championship game, 42-3. Um, now, I'll be honest, I did not see that one coming between, um, Goodrich and, um, and Fenton. I, I, honestly, I did not see that one coming because when I look at that matchup and I said to myself, this could be really interesting. I know Goodrich is a very good team. They're the best, or I think they're, they're arguably one of the best teams in Division Four. but what they did in Fenton was impressive. They really were dominant. They were the better team. And it really showed in that game against a heck of a, a, heck of a team in Fenton. So for Avondale, the more likely scenario for them, and I know, and I said this on the, um, on the blog, that this is the worst case scenario for Avondale. And it, it is for them. Because for Avondale, this is, this is the worst case scenario for them because going east, having to play, um, you know, going west, having to play Fenton in the first round, you win that game, you're possibly dealing with Wall Lake Western. And Wall Lake Western is a team that right now is riding an emotional high after knocking off Mason 20 to 17. And I know they're a well coached team under um, former Farmington coach um, Corey Saroch. So when I look at Wall Lake Western, you know, right now they had to survive. But there's been some times where they just don't look very good. And I watched that Western Mason game, and I thought that times Mason was the better team. And for Wall Lake Western to survive in that game against Mason, that says a lot. So what does that say about Avondale? If Avondale went east to Port Huron, that's probably the best case scenario for Coach Bob Myers' team. If they went east, played like Macomb, Lutheran, North, I mean, it would be a much better scenario for them. But if they got to go west, you know, and see Fenton, that is not really ideal for Coach Bob Meyer and the Yellow Jackets, especially if, if a team like Fenton's going to have to really if they put at least like two, three touchdowns on Avondale, then it's going to force them to open up their, their offense. It's going to, I mean, and I don't think Avondale wants to do that. I mean, yes, they got athletes in Justin Greer Sykes and Cooper Volfrey, but the problem with Avondale is if they're forced to open it up, I don't know how good the quarterback is, especially with the arm strength. I don't know how, if Avondale could be a team like, could pass the ball at least like, like 25, 30 times. I know that's not what Coach Bob Meyer wants, but they might have to. I mean, like, I know they don't have Tyler Herzog over there anymore. I know they don't have Herzog over there anymore. But when you're in the playoffs, everything got to be opened up. So if you're Coach Bob Meyer, you're going to have to really open things up um, to get yourself ready. Because right now, when I look at your situation, you're either going, if you go east, that's the best case scenario for you. West to Fenton, not good. So that's my take on Avondale is the playoff scenario for them, it does not look good for Avondale on several reasons. It really does not look very good because Avondale has to play, because Avondale has to play, um, you know, they got, I mean, they got Carlton Airport. If They should win that game. Um, but if they don't win that game, they're done. 
me, I mean, they don't win the game. If they have to go to Fenton, they're done. They're in trouble. I'm not being mean to Avenue. But playing Fenton in the first round is basically almost like a death sentence. That's basically how I'm looking at it. And right now, Snooze has that. Not sure what Goose Poops has. But I know, but when I did my, um, when I do my projections, right now, I have Avondale playing Fenton. And that's not an easy matchup for, for, um, Avondale at all. It is not. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So, let's go to, from D3 to D2. I got, we got to talk D2 here because Ferndale's in a really interesting situation. And this is a lot of the things that they did not control. Yes, they knocked off A&T, um, 27 to 20, 20, um, on Friday night. They did knock them off. But, when I look at Avondale's situation, and when I look at Ferndale's situation, they're kind of in a really tough spot. <laughs> because you look at where they're at. They're 33rd in D2 right now. They're in the outside looking in. So when I look at Ferndale's situation, I think the Eagles, it's for me, for them, it's like a win and in, but they got to get a little bit of help from somebody. But there are a couple teams that are not safe right now. There are a couple teams that are not, that are not safe right now. So when I look at Avondale, when I look at Ferndale, I mean, like, there are some teams that they could really, they could really make some noise here. and. For Ferndale, what didn't help them was Temperance Bedford winning over Monroe. Le Midland Dow beating Lapeer surely didn't help them. And there was another one I got to think of that didn't help them. Because <laughs> when I look at Ferndale, when I look at the situation they're in, the Eagles are a team that really... They need to win and maybe get some help because I don't know how Utica Ford 2 is going to help them. I think what will help them is they're a D1 school. That's going to help them. But, you know, they're in a kind of a little bit of a tough spot a little bit because uh, I don't know the quality of wins, you know what I mean, that they have right now aren't as good as some of the other teams right now in D2. But that's, where I'm looking at with Ferndale right now is because you look at the issue with them is a lot of the teams right now that are ahead of them have a quality win. <laughs> I mean, now you look at a team like Midland Dow who passed them. Their big win is Lapeer. Lapeer's a D1 school. <laughs> I mean, you look at Temperance Bedford. Their win against Monroe. Monroe's a D1 school. So that says something right there. Ferndale wins against Ford. That's a big win for them. <laughs> but they got some things that they can't control. I mean, you look at the division. You know, you look at according to Snooze's map. There's some teams that are still in danger of missing out on the playoffs. So Ferndale, to me, they got some opportunities here that I think they could do. That they could do is get in the playoff. They got opportunities. I mean, they got a ton of opportunities that are ahead of them. So when I look at Ferndale in their situation, <laughs> you got to look at it for Coach Eric Royal's team as an opportunity to get in the playoffs. And there is an opportunity. But they got to perform. They have got to play well. And I think they have a chance to do it. <laughs> but a couple games that really didn't help them were... Couple of games that really didn't help them were um, Midland Dallas win against Lapeer and Tepperts Bedford's win against them. Monroe, those are two that really didn't help Ferndale's causes. Even though Ferndale won, but they're still in a tough spot because they had that loss to, to a Madison Heights Lampier and they have that loss to um, Avondale. I mean, those are, those are two really tough losses at the moment for Ferndale. But they just don't have enough playoff points. Right, they're really, really tight right now when it comes to playoff points. So they knock off Ford. That'll help a lot. Um, 
But they're going to need some help. So that's where I'm looking at with Ferndale in their case is they're going to need help. They're going to need like, they're going to need some teams to lose that are ahead of them or even in the playoff field. And if they don't get that, you know, then they're, then they're done. I mean, really, that's the bottom line is that's Ferndale's situation right now. Win and get some help. That's really what it is. I mean, I did say in the blog, win and in. You know what I mean? The question is going to be is, where is going to be that team, you know, who can win to get them in? So that's really the big question mark here for Coach Eric Royal is, you know, and the, and the Eagles, they have to win and get in. I mean, they have to win. You know, if they win, I think they're in. But if they don't, you know, then they're done. So we'll see what happens with Ferndale going forward there. Farmington. Yeah, they had that 27-6 loss to Lake Orion. Um, Julian Johnson came back in that game. Now they take on a 5-3 um, and three Dearborn Heights Crestwood team um, over in Dearborn. So that should be really interesting. I think Farmington should win that game. And I think they will win that game. Um, when I looked at Goose Poops' playoff projections um, with Farmington's situation, even if they lost, he had them still in the playoffs. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to take his word here. I'm going to really take his word and say, well, with Farmington, I I'm going to take his word here. And I'm going to say Farmington is a safe bet right now in the playoffs. Despite that, if they lose, if they even if they lose to Crestwood, <laughs> it creates a mess. But, but Farmington, I think, is in a much better situation. The win against Troy is huge for them at the moment. Um, and I think that's their best win right now is Troy. So when I look at Farmington, they're in a, they're in an interesting spot because if they can knock off Crestwood, then they're going to probably see their arch rival North Farmington in the first round. They could see him. Could you just imagine... Rich over at Farmington TB10. Oh, Goldmine thinking about it. So when I look at the matchup with Farmington, I mean, I think it's Rich Kincaid's name. Yep. It's an interesting matchup if Farmington were to rematch North. Is the Farmington Cup on the line? I don't think it is. Now, I know when Oxford plays Lake Orion at Clarkston, no, so when Lake Orion plays Clarkson Oxford, the double O trophy and the trophy that um, Lake Orion Clarkson has, that thing's on the line. So, is the Farmington Cup on the line if those two teams were to play each other in the playoffs? I would say yes. It would have to be on the line. But it would be really interesting to see. But Farmington right now, when I look at their playoff fate right now, to me, it looks safe at the moment. There's a little danger, but it'd be more safer for them to win against Crestwood than it is to lose. Because if they lose, they're going to be praying. So that's really how I'm looking at with Farmington is if they lose, they're praying. That's really what it is. Now let's look at North Farmington. Tough loss to Adams. 28-14. I said 28 nothing was that score. Um. You know, and I look at that game, and, you know, tough one for for Coach for the Raiders. So now I got to wonder, especially in a winner-take-all, I mean, like, especially in a winner-take-all game where North Farmington's got an opportunity to win the blue outright, and Troy, if they can win, saves their season. So that's going to be really interesting. Um, And I know it's North Farmington's homecoming this week, so... There's that distraction over there. So that's something to really keep an eye on for North Farmington, especially in their homecoming, taking on a Troy team that is absolutely desperate right now. So North is safe in the playoffs. The question for me is, are they going to get a top seed in the playoffs? Could they maybe get a two seed in the playoffs? I mean, there's so many questions with North Farmington considering... Where they're at right now. There's so many questions. 
So when I look at the Raiders scenario, I mean, North Farmington, I think the team that can, you know, if they can knock off Troy, they're in and Troy's done. So for North Farmington, this is an opportunity for them to secure a home game, get a number one seed. Now, when you look at the matchups, you know, could they see Livoni Franklin in the first round? Could they see Farmington? Could they see Orchard Lake St. Mary's? Orchard Lake St. Mary's is a really difficult matchup. I'll tell you what, a team that I don't think wants to see Orchard Lake St. Mary's is Groves. I'll tell you why in a minute. But when I look at North Farmington, their postseason fate, I mean, they're locked in the playoffs, obviously. But the matchup is interesting. And they can win a league title outright. So that would be something for them, considering their win against Seaholm was absolutely huge at the moment right now for them. That win against Seaholm was monumentally huge for them. So for North Farmington, you kind of expected, you know, they would lose to Adams. And then now you have the matchup here against Troy, league title on the line. I mean, there's so many storylines when I look at Troy um, in North Farmington heading into that game, considering everything that's on the line in that one. But playoff-wise for North Farmington, um, I'm looking at either a Farmington matchup, a Livonia Franklin matchup, or the worst case for them is having to play Orchard Lake St. Mary's in the first round. So we'll see how that one goes. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see how um, the MHA decides this um, and determining their fate. So we'll see what the MHA goes with when it comes to North Farmington. Now we go to Seal. <laughs> Two straight losses. I mean, they were just absolutely shellacked by West Bloomfield, 34-3. Passing game. What's the difference there? They were shredded in the air by the Lakers. They were shredded in the air by Bo Jackson. Cam Flowers had a touchdown. Elijah Durham had a touchdown. Josh Tate ran the ball well. I mean, that's pretty much the West Movement team we expected all year long. And they shut down Penn Roberts. They shut down the Veer, holding that team, to, holding Seahome to three points. Three points. And this was a team that got, has gotten shredded all year long by very good teams. Oxford put up nearly 40 on them. Lake Orion put up 40 on them. Adams, you know, winning 21-14 against them. 21. Clarkson absolutely shredded them. Their defense. So it kind of tells me West Boomba's defense grew up in that game. But I think for Seaholm, not a good sign for them. Really not. There's some concerns with Seaholm. There is some serious concerns with them. Playoff-wise, they're safe. They got Groves this week. It's a golden opportunity for them to get back. You know, and Groves is a team that's really not been tested much as of late. But for Seaholm, the problem is for them is they got to get their offense back on track. They have not been the same since that um, two-point gamble by Coach Jim DeWald. I asked myself that question. What if DeWald went for one, tied the game, forced overtime? If he did, if he decided to just tie it up at 24, go to overtime, we're probably talking about a Seahome win right now. We're probably talking about Seahome with one loss right now. So, now with Seaholm in their situation, Snooze has them taking on Warren Mott, but there's a possibility that Seaholm and Groves could rematch each other again in Beverly Hills. That's possible. I mean, that is really possible. So, probably two options for Seaholm right now. Um, they're going to have to see Groves in their district for sure. Um, but I would see right now the most likely scenario for them is playing Warren Mott in the first round. Um, 
But that could change. I mean, like if they send Orchard Lake St. Mary's to see home, that's a possibility. And that is the absolute worst case scenario for them. Um, so there's a lot of worst case right now for see home right now. There really is. So that's really the case that I have right now with see home is, you know, you're looking at more and more likely a, a clash with Ward Mott. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we will see what happens in that matchup. We're going to see how it goes. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. And then there's Groves. Groves probably is the big story here. The Falcons are a very interesting team. Eight no right now. Unbeaten. Really high in playoff points. Take on your arch rival this week. Probably is going to be your biggest test since West Bloomfield. But you're still might be a first-round exit. And here's why. People ask me about Groves and say, well, you're not high on the Groves bandwagon. I mean, there's serious concerns when I look at Groves and scenarios. If they had to play, I mean, you know, Groves, for them, they could see Warren D. LaSalle in the playoffs. They could see him. It's possible. The team that absolutely frightens me if I'm Brendan Flaherty is Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Here's why. They scare me. The Eagles have played a very tough schedule in the Catholic League. You play against De La Salle. You play against Novi Detroit Catholic Central. You're playing against Birmingham Brother Rice. You're playing against Proven Powers in Ohio. You're playing, they're already battle tested. They're battle hardened. So the biggest problem that I have with Seahawk, with them Groves, is the fact that I don't think that they've been battle tested in the white. I mean, they've blown everybody out in that division by at least, this year by at least by two touchdowns. They have blown teams out by two touchdowns or more. That's really the case right now when I look at when I look at Groves' scenario. Because that is the absolute worst case scenario for you if you have to play Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Because one, they're they're battle tough. They're tested. My question here is can I trust that secondary of Groves against Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Especially now that you have former Stony Creek coach Nick Merlo running their offense. So he knows what Groves' defense looks like. Because he's seen it when he was at Stony Creek. So that's a difficult matchup for Groves. Doesn't matter if they go undefeated or not. Because if they see Orchard Lake St. Mary's, they're in trouble. That is a dangerous matchup for Groves if they have to play St. Mary's in the first round. If they get Warren Cousineau, that's a much better matchup for them. If they're away from St. Mary's, that's a better scenario for them. Because <laughs> if they got to play St. Mary's in the first round, they're in trouble. That's the scenario that I see with them. Warren Cousineau is a much better matchup for them. So much better for them. And they may not be, and they still might not be safe to get in the playoffs. So when I look at Gross's scenario, there's two scenarios. Warren Cousineau or Orchard Lake St. Mary's. I know for sure Gross fans don't want to see the Eagles. And that is a very, very difficult matchup. So we'll see how that one goes. We'll see how that one goes. On the Division One, Rochester. Rochester, big win against um, Berkeley the other night, 56-7. 42-0 at halftime. I watched the um, Rochester um, YouTube page, um, their game against Berkeley. I watched that. 
Steph Falcon when he speaks about it. He said he wanted to talk about the, their chances, playoff scenarios, who they got to catch to win. I'll tell you, who, they need a lot of help right now. They need a lot of help. They got to win first against Wall Lake Northern. So I think they will. But I don't know if I see Jenison, if I see Chippewa Valley, um, Troy, Utica, um, the winner of Kalamazoo Central and Kalamazoo Lloyd Norks. I mean, I don't know. It's a tough, tough sell for Coach Eric Vernon's and his team here. It's a tough sell. So the scenario is, you know, here's the scenario. The teams that they've won, they're sitting at three and five right now. The wins are against A and T, who sits right now one and one and at um one and seven right now. They knocked off Frazier. And then they knocked off Berkeley. I don't see a scenario for Rochester for them to get in the playoffs. I really don't see a scenario for them to get into the postseason. And I think, to me, that is where I think the scenario looks at for Rochester is this is a team where, you know, they had chances to get in the postseason, but they lost to Stony Creek. That's the one that's killing them right now is that loss to Stony Creek. So when I look at the Cougars scenario right now, that's where the playoff scenario looks at with Stony Creek is can the Cougars can they and sorry, can the Falcons find a way in the playoffs? It's a real long shot for them. And I hope the Falcon says 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 something about me on my on um when he does his um YouTube thing this week. Cause I'm telling you the scenario right now, it doesn't look good for Rochester. It really does not look good for them at all. Really doesn't. So let's look at now Troy's scenario. Troy right now is the last team in the playoffs. After their emotional 21-14 win against Troy Athens. And the fact that Troy trailed at, trailed. I mean, they trailed at halftime, 14 to 7. Need to score two touchdowns to save their season. Noah Ori basically saved their season for that game. Now everything comes down to North Farmington for them. They got to go to Ron Holland. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be really interesting. When I look at Troy's scenario, you know, if for them, it's just win and in. Win and in. I mean, the playoff scenarios for them, if they do get in, you got Detroit Cast. That's the possibility. Lake Orion's a possibility. Those are the two possibilities I see right now at Troy. Is either you're going north to Lake Orion or you're going south to Detroit Cast Tech. I mean, those are the scenarios that I see. I don't see Utica Eisenhower. I don't see them playing Utica Eisenhower because I think Romeo's going to play them. So when I look at... And that's if they get in. If they don't get in, they're done. That's really what it is right now. So for Troy, it's basically, if I'm coach um, Chris Frazier, I am basically saying, I don't want any distractions. I don't want any, you know, because we have got to win to at least play another week. We're not safe right now. That's what I'm telling his team. We got to go down to Ron Holland Field to play a very good North Farmington team. They're coming off a loss to Adams. We're coming off a big emotional win against our arch rivals. We got to be careful of a letdown. That's really where I see with them right now. Can Troy handle, can Troy handle basically going down to a hostile environment, which it's going to be, and overcome some demons? If they do, they're in the playoffs. They're going to have to play the best game they played. And North Farm to the team that's had their number all year. So we'll see how that one goes. We'll see how that one goes. Stony Creek. They're locked. 
Stony Creek is locked after a 49 12 win against Abbott. Congratulations, Coach Rick Powell, in his first year um, coaching the Cougars over there. Great win for them. And a great way for them to get in the playoffs. Because it, they're building something over there at Stony Creek. They are building something over there. And it's a good win for Stony Creek. Great win for them. Playoff fate for them. I don't see him going to Ike in the first round. I don't see him going to Eisenhower. I really don't go and see him going to Swinehart. I'd be shocked they do. The more likely scenario for them is either going west to see Lake Orion or an Oxford or maybe an Adams in the first round. That's, I think, the best, the more likely scenario for Stony Creek is to go west because they go east in the Macomb County. They got no chance. So, for Stony Creek getting in the playoffs, the very young team, um, their first playoff trip back, I think, since the special year they had a couple years ago. Um, actually, since the um, the um, Rochester loss back in 22. So, it's the first time, you know what I mean, back in the playoffs since 22. So, in two years. So, it's a good experience for those seniors. Um, credit to their line. Um, Spencer Bigman, Sam Fogler. Um, Peyton Rumber coming back from injury. That's been a big deal for them. Um, they've really improved. They buy in the Coach Powell system. So, for Stony Creek, team that's locked in the playoffs, congratulations to Coach Powell there. West Bloomfield. Uh, when I look at the Lakers, 34-3 um, winning at Seahome. They're in the playoffs. What do I see as their postseason path? They play Roseville coming up. Um, Roseville's an interesting game for West Bloomfield. Really interesting. There's so many pathways for West Bloomfield. I mean, they could go to Novi Detroit Catholic Central. Could they go to Lake Orion? Could they go to Nordville? Could they put, go to Novi? Novi's absolutely perfect for West Bloomfield. It is absolutely perfect. If you're Tyler Keith and you're looking at, staring at Novi, you would take that in a heartbeat. Or if you knock off Roseville, and make Novi come to you, that's a better plus. Because then you have to send Novi to the swap. Which is a perfect scenario for Coach Jack Hilmers and the Lakers, considering where they were at two weeks ago. For West Bloomfield, there is a chance for them to get a home game out of this. There is a chance. There is a remedy of playing in the OA Red. There is. So if you're the Lakers, you know, and you're looking at going south to play Novi, and if Novi Detroit Catholic Central wasn't in your district, that's a better plus for you. Because you can win that district. And then if they send Novi Detroit Catholic Central to Howell, to Brighton, to Grand Ledge to see them, that's a better plus for you. And that's a good case scenario for the Lakers. If they got to play CC, that's a bad spot for them. Lake Orion would be, if they go north, Lake Orion would be a really interesting matchup. But I, I think right now with Troy right now in there, I kind of think more of Troy in that fate. But for West Bloomfield, if they got to go south, if they got to go to Novi, being a district with Nordville in there, I still would take that is a much better chance for you than having to go play um than having to go play nobody Detroit Catholic Central in the first round. So I'll be curious to see what Tyler Keith has to say about the scenario for West Bloomfield because it is something to really keep an eye on. And I really think when I look at the Lakers scenario, um if they go south, if nobody Detroit Catholic Central goes west then that is a great case scenario for them. It is. Really is. Adams. When I look at the Highlanders, 28-9 win against North Farmington. Um, their fate is pretty much sealed. They could get a home game if they knock on New Baltimore Anchor Bay. They're either looking at Oxford, they're looking at Lake Orion, maybe looking at Stony Creek. Those are three teams they're looking at right now. 
And the question for me is, is Ryland Waters coming back? If he does, look out. Even though Adams has done really, really good with them, Nolan, with them, Nolan Ferris at quarterback. But um, but it's clear as day if um, Ryland Waters comes back, Adams is a completely different team. So we'll see how that one goes. But Adams right now locked in the playoffs. See how that one goes. Clarkson. When I look at the Wolves' fate. Nice, um, they had a nice win against Movie Hills. I'm um, 41-nothing with that score. Got to play their backups. Big one with Ike this week. This should be a fun one. Be really interesting how that one goes. Playoff fate for Clarkston. They go east. They could go east. But I more see them going north. If you could just imagine putting Dave Clarkston with Davison and Graham Blank. And Lapeer, that's the worst case scenario for those three northern teams. If Clarkson has to play Davis in the first round, I take my chances on Clarkson because one, they can cover the they can cover Davison's secondary. Two, I don't think Davison will have an answer for um for Clarkson's running attack. Grand Blank just absolutely destroyed them defensively, fifty five points. In a 55-49 loss. Now, one of the touchdowns um, Grand Blank scored against Davison was an absolute questionable call because I didn't th he didn't complete the process, and yet the official said it was a touchdown. I know I got Coach Jacob Weingart's really upset. Um, but when I look at if they got to play Clarkston, Davison does, I think Davison's in trouble. I really do. Because one, Davis, the Valley and the OA Red are two different animals. The Red, you're basically, the Red is a street fight every week. The Valley, you got three teams in there, three echelons, the D1, and Davison, Grand Blank, and Lapeer. You got somewhat decent teams with Midland, Midland Dow, um, Saginaw Heritage, um, and then you have Traverse City West, Traverse City Central. Both those two teams are fighting for playoff spots right now. Um, then you have Mount Pleasant as well. Um, so when you look at the scenario for um, for Clarkson, going north, I think it's a great option for them. Going north, you know what I mean? It's a lot better going than going east, I'll tell you that much right now. If they go west, you know what I mean, see how in the first round, that could be really interesting for them. Because I think that would be really interesting if Clarkson were to go west. So. But I don't see it likely, especially with Grand Ledge in the conversation. So we'll see how that how that would do. And they and they also I think they would also take Grand Lake and Davison over um to go into Livingston County than they would with Clarkson. So we'll see how that one goes and that playoff scenario goes for them. But right now for Clarkson, right now I see a more northern scenario for them right now. So we'll see how that one goes for them. Oxford. Oxford, there's some options for them. They, they had a nice win, 49-14 win against Oak Park. Um, I can see going south to see our tribal Lake Orion's a possibility. Um, dealing with Adams and Stony Creek as well. That is a possibility there. Going north to Davis and Grand Blank and Lapeer is another one. But I think the district will center around Grand Blank, which is, I think, a terrible scenario for... For Davison, considering where Clarkson's a little bit closer to um, Grand Blank than the Davison. So, if Davison would have won that game against Grand Blank, then I think Oxford goes north. Uh, but I just think right now, when I look at Oxford's scenario right now, I think for them, it's going south. So we'll see how that one goes. Tough one this week for them, Lumen, though. They got Macomb, Dakota. So we'll see how that one goes. See how that one goes. And then there's Lake Orion. Lake Orion, no problem with Farmington 27-6. Um, T.R. Hill looked good. Um, big one with Celine this week. Should be really interesting. Um, Celine, of course, brings Tommy Carr. They got a good running back in Isaiah Harris. Um, their tight end is very good as well. Um, I read a post, a tweet on Celine's... Um, the um, the um, publisher of the Celine Post, um, 
He said that Celine would beat Lake Orion. Um, and that Celine needed a tough game. They're going to get a tough game. Um, but I don't know if the league that they've been in is, is going to help them. I mean, yes, they got those three forfeit losses. And they knocked off some good teams. They knocked off Dexter. They knocked off um, Ann Arbor Pioneer. They knocked off Brighton. Those three were considered forfeit wins for um, forfeit losses. I mean, so we'll see how that one goes. But for Lake Orion right now, from a postseason perspective, they win. I think it's pretty much a lock-in at Stony Creek. If they lose, they could go to Adams. They could go to Oxford. Um. They could see Clarkston. I mean, that's an option. Um, I don't think they're going to see Eisenhower. I'd be shocked if they do. Um, but there's some scenarios for Lake Orion. I think there's six scenarios that I see for the Dragons. Um, West Bloomfield's a scenario. So we'll see how that goes. And we'll see how that goes. So a lot to look at if you're a Dragon. If you're the Dragons. A lot to look at. All right, here are my picks for week nine. A lot of games this week. Uh, we're going to start with Royal Oak and Clawson. Um, Clawson's bound for a playoff spot. Royal Oak really not playing for a lot right now. I'm taking Clawson that one. Pontiac taking on Detroit Lincoln King Academy. I got, um, last year Pontiac got Lincoln King Academy in a classic 44-42 overtime. I got Lincoln King winning this one against Pontiac. Um, I don't think it'll be convincing. I think it'll be close. Um, we got um, Ferndale taking on Utica Ford. Um, Ferndale bound for a playoff spot. I'm going to take the Eagles in this one over the Falcons, over Adam Runkel. Um, I think Fer but Ferndale's going to be really praying. Um, I think they're going to be really praying um, as we head forward um, on the Sunday at a 4.30. I think that's FanDuel now is owned Valley Sports, Valley Sports ne Networks now. So. I mean, like it's it's. I mean, I'll t I'll tell more information about that on um with the selection show, um, coming up in a little bit. Um, Berkeley taking on Mass Knights Lampier. I'm taking the Rams in this one over the Bears. Um, I just think the Rams got too much. They're gearing up for the playoffs. <laughs> um, despite the fact there's history with Roy Ozerowski, um, being on Chris Corey's staff over there at Berkeley, um. And then Avondale taking on Carlton Airport. Um, I'm going to take Avondale in this one. I think the Yellow Jackets um, bounce back after a really tough loss to Stony Creek. I think that, um, and it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. So I'm taking Avondale in that one over um, Carlton Airport. So it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Farmington taking on um, Dearborn Heights Crestwood. Um, two, five, and three teams going at it. Farmington's played a tougher schedule. So I'm taking the Falcons in this one. I think Farmington gets right in this one. If they can find a wide receiver here out of this group, um, I think they'll be fine. They got the runners and um, Herschel um, McCormick um, and Herschel McCormick and um, and um, Anthony Bailey. Um, Jalen Julian Johnson back. It's a big deal for Farmington for Coach Jason Albright. Um, but I really think um, if they can find a deep threat here in this game, I think Farmington will win that one against Zimmer Heights Crestwood and get in the playoffs, be a lock, more of a lock than I think they are right now. Um, and then we have the, um, then we have the, um, league games here. We got, um, Oak Park and Bloomfield Hills. I'm taking Oak Park in this one. Um, be a good way to end the year for Coach Greg Carter to get a W against Bloomfield Hills. Bloomfield Hills has really struggled. Haven't been the same team to start the year. I mean, they've been struggling all year long. Um, and then we have um, the battle between um, Troy Athens and Nor we have Troy Athens taking on Frazier. Um, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take Frazier in this one over Troy Athens. I mean, like I don't know where Troy Athens' mind is at after falling last week to Troy 21-14. In this one, I'm gonna take the Ramblers. I think the Frazier, what they did to Troy last year, um, really made making a statement, taking them out of the playoffs. I see them adding the Troy Athens misery, so I'm gonna take the um I'm gonna take the um the um red I'm gonna take the Ramblers here over the Red Hawks in this one. So we'll see how this one goes. So we'll see how that one goes. Um then we have 
the um, battle. We have Oak Park. Then we have um, Troy taking on North Farmington. This is going to decide the. Um, this is going to decide the. Um, the um, blue title here and Troy's playoff hopes. Homecoming at North Farmington. It's a big one for both teams. Troy's coming off an emotional win. They're desperate. North Farms are coming off a tough loss. They're homecoming. Um, in this game here, um, I'm going to take the Raiders in this one because I, th I think that, I think Terrence James is a big game here. I think that, um, you know, Duke Blanche has a big game here. I I'm going to take the, um, I'm going to take the um, Raiders here. Being at home, homecoming, the emotions are there. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see here, but I'm gonna take the um I'm gonna take the Raiders in that one against the Colts. Um denying Troy a trip to playoffs. So it's unfortunate, but I, I think that's what I'm looking at right now when I look at that matchup. Um and then we have we have Rochester taking on Wall Lake Northern. Rochester a team that's desperately battling to get in the playoffs. Um I think Rochester wins. But I think they don't get in the playoffs. So I'm gonna take the Falcons in this one. Finish the year strong at four and five. I, I just don't see how they're gonna get in the playoffs. Um, considering they need a lot of help to get in. And I just don't see the teams that they beat gonna really help them out much here in that one. Um Southfield Arson Tech and Detroit Renaissance. Um, I'm taking Detroit Renaissance in this one. A and T's really had a miserable year. Haven't been the same team since knocking off La Beecher. Um, so when I look at that matchup here, I'm gonna take the um I'm gonna take the um Phoenix here. I think Detroit Renaissance finish the year off strong. And they knock off AT in that one there. Harper Woods, East English Village Prep. I'm taking the Pioneers over the um in that one. I think Harper Woods wins that one, gets themselves ready for the playoffs. So it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes there in that one. Um, Stony Creek taking on Ann Arbor Huron. Um, I like the Cougars in that one. I think the Cougars will make some noise here. Um, uh, make a statement, get ready for the playoffs. I really like where they're at right now, considering what they did to Abadale. Uh, Ann Arbor Huron's really been struggling all year long. Um, so I'm going to take the, um, Cougars in that one to knock off a, um, the, um, to knock off Ann Arbor Huron, um, and get ready for the playoffs. And then we have the red game. We have Groves versus Seaholm. This could be an interesting matchup, but I, I just don't like Seaholm's chances at the last two weeks. So I'm going to take Groves in this one, being at home. Uh, motivated after what happened last year to them. Um, so I think Groves will win this one. Do I think it's a route? No, but it'll be very interesting to see how that matchup goes. But I'm going to take Groves um, convincingly over Seaholm. It'll be close, maybe 10 points. So we'll see how that one goes. And then the Red Games, West Bloomfield taking on Roseville. This should be a fun matchup here. Um, <laughs> Roseville, you know, they're a team that coming off a 21-19 win against Romeo. Um, I think Rose, I think, I think West Bloomfield has found their, found something after what happened last week. Um, I think the Lakers do take this one. Um, and they win this one. Um, in a tight game, I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. Um, don't be surprised if it's like a 56-49 game. So I'm taking West Bluefield in that one to go into Roseville and knock off a really good Panthers team there um, over there in Roseville, Macomb County. Um, Adams at New Baltimore, Anchor Bay. Um, Anchor Bay trying to win this game to get in the playoffs. Um I don't see Anchor Bay winning this game. I think Adams, um, even without Rylan Waters, um, I just think Adams wins um, this one over um, Anchor Bay, considering everything that they've been through all year long. Um, I don't know if Mike Gioni's back over there um, at Anchor Bay. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, but I got the um, Highlanders over the Tars in that one. Um, Lake Orion and Celine. This is going to be really interesting. Um, Lake Orion dealing with them. Um, I know that tweet out there. I put, retweeted that tweet that um Celine's guy said on Twitter. Um, if Lake Orion found out about that, um, I think that um, 
I think the Dragons do get the job done against Celine. It'll be a classic. It'll be a classic like last season. Um, so I think Lake Orion wins that game against Celine. Um, if they win, they get they get a home game, like the two home games. Um, Celine, despite the um three losses, they're still technically an undefeated team. So I really like the um the Dragons in that game against Celine. Um, you know, so I, I just think that they played a tougher schedule. I think they played um more battle tested than Celine. Now Celine is no slouch. I mean, they got very good players. I mean, Tommy Carr, Isaiah Harris, and then um their tight end is really good as well. So it'll be interesting to see. It could be a shootout. I mean, like over there between the Dragons and the Hornets. So that'll be really interesting how that one goes there between those two teams. Um, Clarkson and Eisenhower. Um, Ike last year got Clarkson. Um, you know, Ike's got Bryce Hurley at court at um playing running back. But I think Clarkson's defense finds a way and shuts him down. I think Clarkson gets revenge after what happened to him last year. They make a statement. They beat Eisenhower. Um, get a ton of playoff points. I like the Wolves in that game against um the Eagles. And then last but not least, we got Macomb, Dakota, and Oxford. Um, this game's interesting because Dakota's seen a heavy team. Oxford's seen a heavy team. Um, both teams are coming off wins. Um, I, I don't know how Oxford's going to match up with Macomb Dakota's physicality, especially with the running back who's going to Michigan State. Um, I think this is a tight game. Am I thinking Oxford in this one? You know what? I'm going to take Oxford in this one. I, I just think because I think the Wildcats are at home. Um, Luke Johnson goes off. I think Oxford pulls it off. I, I think the Wildcats go in there, pull it off, and I think the OA Red gets five wins this week around the league. So I, I really like where the Red is at right now, and I think it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. Now, the High School Sports Selection Show is on Sunday at 4.30 p.m. on um, FanDuel Sports Network, of course, that used to be Valley Sports Detroit. Now they call it FanDuel Sports Network now. Um, so... We'll see what happens going forward, but, um, you know, we'll see what happens. I'll have a playoff postings on my blog at sangamayfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfootsfoots